Greetings in the name of Jesus and welcome to the sixth and final session of our SHAPE series. We have been using the SHAPE acronym as a tool to help each of us find our God-given purpose. To recap, S stands for spiritual gifts. H stands for heart. A stands for abilities. P stands for personality. E stands for experience. Having moved backwards through the word shape, we began in our last session to discuss spiritual gifts. These are special gifts given to believers by the Holy Spirit. They enable us together to be the church. They are given to us so that we can minister to others and therefore build up the body of Christ. Before we go on, here's an important reminder. Your spiritual gifts are not given to you for your own benefit. They are given to you for the good of others. This means we are not meant to use our spiritual gifts to build ourselves up, but to build up other people. I mentioned last time that one way to think about the many different spiritual gifts mentioned in the scriptures is to categorize them. Last time, we looked at the seven motivational gifts. I described the motivational gifts as the engine which drives your spiritual life. By now, you should have done the motivational gifts questionnaire. This should have pointed you towards the particular way in which your God-given purpose will emerge in the body of Christ. Today, we are going to look at the other two categories of spiritual gift. First, let's talk about the ministry gifts. The ministry gifts are how God works in what you do to serve and meet the needs of others. Ministry gifts tend to be long-lasting. God gives us ministry gifts which flow from our motivational gifts so that we are able to serve Him and others to make the church grow. Here's what Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says about ministry gifts. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Notice that here the gifts are assigned roles, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Notice also that there is a purpose to these roles. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 says these ministry gifts are given in order to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Our purpose in using our ministry gifts is to equip others, to help them to grow in their own ministry. Again, our gifts are not for ourselves, they are for others. Our ultimate purpose in using our ministry gifts is to build up the body of Christ, as verse 13 puts it until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. So the final purpose of our ministry gifts is unity and maturity, with all the believers growing more and more like Christ. What a brilliant plan God put in place. He made sure that the church, the body of Christ, would grow. He designed it so that it would not depend on just one person. Instead, he gave different ministry gifts to different people so that all of us could play a part in building up the others. Each one of us is an important part in this process. Let's move now to the manifestation gifts. The manifestation gifts, as the name suggests, show God's supernatural power. These more dramatic gifts are what many people first think of when you mention spiritual gifts. But they are not necessarily the most important gifts. St. Paul gives us a list of manifestation gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. He writes, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit 
for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Unlike the motivation and ministry gifts, manifestation gifts are not always permanent gifts, but may come and go as the need arises. So, for example, you may be given the gift of interpreting a tongue when there is no one else with this gift present. You may or may not be called upon to interpret a tongue again. But another time, you may find that someone is healed or God performs a miracle in response to your prayer. Now let's get to the important matter of finding out your ministry and motivational gifts. I have decided that the best thing is for all of us to do the Modified Hearts Questionnaire. The Modified Hearts Questionnaire is a very comprehensive test for spiritual gifts, which first appeared in 1979 in a book written by the late Peter Wagner. Peter Wagner was a great teacher and writer, and for 30 years he served as Professor of Church Growth at the Fuller Theological Seminary School of World Missions. He wrote many books, but the particular one I'm thinking of is Your Spiritual Gifts Can Help Your Church Grow. If you are interested in learning more about spiritual gifts, this is the book to read. An updated version was published in 2017. In my opinion, the Modified House Questionnaire is the best there is for finding your spiritual gifts. I will put a link to this questionnaire in the bio of this video, so you can download it for yourself. The questionnaire has a very helpful list of definitions of the various spiritual gifts, along with scriptural passages which go with each gift. There is a lot of reading material there to help you once you have found your gifts. Peter Wagner doesn't categorize the gifts as I have done. Therefore, to help you see which of your gifts are motivational or ministry or manifestation gifts, I have designed a form you can fill in afterwards. The idea is to carefully transfer your scores from the Hearts Questionnaire to the Spiritual Gifts Results form. If you would like a copy of my Spiritual Gifts Results form, please email me at the address in the bio of this video. I do need to say quite strongly that you should not be interested in your lowest scores. These don't count at all. Everyone has a lot of low scores. Peter and I both scored several noughts and ones and twos. These are not important. What do count are your top three scores. These are the areas where God has gifted you and wants you to exercise your ministry. Let me use Peter and my scores as an example of what I mean. Although Peter and I are very different in every other part of our shape, you will notice that our spiritual gifts are very similar. I guess this is because we had a similar calling in the body of Christ. Even though our gifts are similar, our way of using our gifts is different because each of us is unique. Our experience, our personality, our abilities and our passions differ. Peter's top motivational gifts are teaching, exhorting and administration. My top motivational gifts are teaching, exhorting and prophecy. His top ministry gifts are teacher, 
pastor and apostle. My top ministry gifts are teacher, pastor and leading worship. His top manifestation gifts are knowledge, wisdom and faith. My top manifestation gifts are wisdom, knowledge and faith. Both of us have many scores that are lower than five. And we both have a naught for celibacy, which makes us laugh. But as I said, these low scores are not important at all. What count are the areas where God has gifted us to serve the church? And if you know Peter and you know me, you will be able to see how these gifts have been operating in our lives. That's important for you too. People who know you well will confirm for you what the questionnaire has revealed. But I do want to say that these questionnaires are just guides. They're a way to help you find your God-given purpose, especially in relation to the way you serve God and the church. Both Peter and I have done the Modified Hearts questionnaire several times during the course of our ministry lives. Our answers and our scores have changed over time. This is because our circumstances have changed. God is not static. His relationship with us is dynamic. And so from time to time, a particular spiritual gift will take precedence because of where we are. You will probably notice once you have done the test that your spiritual gifts dovetail with everything else you have learned about yourself during this series. I hope you have found this process exciting. Please do continue exploring and praying and trying things out. Often God's purpose for our lives emerges more powerfully as we try things. And so, as we come to the end of our SHAPE series, let us pray. Thank you, Father, for shaping each of us uniquely for service. Thank you for the gifts given to each one of us by your Holy Spirit. As we seek to understand ourselves better, we trust you to be our guide. We rely on you to show us where you want us to serve. May we be people who help others to grow as we use your gifts to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.